Fit for Life Radio, episode number 89. Today, Will and I are going to just talk from the heart. We're going to speak from the depths of our, our souls. About the old, what's that commercial, Staples, the, the easy button? The easy button. Just hit the easy button. Is just, that Staples? Yeah. Nah, I don't I think know. so. But we're going to take the contrarian to what Staples was trying to tell you to do. Contrarian. Stop looking for the easy button. Mm-hmm. That's it. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> really, though, I mean, you want to make things easy, but there is no easy button. Right? Especially, like, in 2021, man, when there's just a million things influencing us. It's, like, harder than it's probably ever been to make a change. And trying to find the easy button, just you're just going to spin your wheels. Yeah. They don't really help yep and a common one for example when someone's like okay i'm gonna do this health fitness thing i'm gonna get in better shape they go pick up a waist trainer stop (laughs) slap that baby on and look there may be some psychological short-term benefits of well yeah you put it on now and you your waist is smaller and you feel more confident in that moment but the reality is is it's that's where the benefits stop (laughs) yeah it's squeezing your internal organs uh, you may sweat more because, yeah, you have this polyester fabric wrapped around you and it makes you sweat. But then when you... Then you're just sweating. Yeah. And then when you replace it with drinking more water, it's, you're just, yeah, replacing the sweat you lost. It's not... You're not losing fat. No. Now, like, it, it's going it, to... And I know some people tighten them like crazy. Like, it'll probably make your abs work not as hard. It's mm-hmm. like wearing a belt all the time. Yeah. Like, that's not the best idea. It probably affects your breathing. And yeah, just sweating. It reminds me of when people, gee, I still see them with the sauna suits. Yeah. Where it's just essentially a garbage bag over your whole body. Mm-hmm. And they just think because they're sweating a ton that they're losing all this weight. Well, when yeah, you drink water, water when you drink water later that day, it's all, it's all yeah. coming back. And realize that came from like wrestling and fighting sports where you have to weigh in for your sport by a certain time and then you rehydrate. Yeah. So it's been, so for them, it's, it's not healthy either. No. But it's beneficial. Well, if I can drop 12 pounds really quick in a day or two so I can step on the scale, hit my weight class, and then rehydrate. Yeah. And then actually be 10, 15 pounds heavier and stronger. Then that's strategic, man. Fighting above. So that your actual weight is above the weight class you're fighting. It's, yeah, beneficial. Yeah. But that's completely separate. Yeah, that's a whole different issue. From you, someone wanting to... Just lose weight. Lose body fat. And then, like, honest... Like... I feel like when you do something like wear a sauna suit, you're actually making it harder on yourself, even though you're trying to take the easy route. Yeah. Like, you don't need to be hot and miserable, sweating in a bag, essentially, mm-hmm. just to lose weight. Like, that's just unnecessary. Like, yeah. you don't need to go to that level of discomfort. And that's not what we mean by, you know, stop taking the easy route. But And then think of something like some strict, exact meal plan, right? Again. Oh, easy button. Just tell me what to eat. Just, you can't have carbs. Period. That's easy, yeah. right? But the problem is you're now over, you'll be able to do it for a short amount of time, but then eventually you'll be like, screw this and go back to all your old habits. And, and the things you actually need to address may be deep-seated emotional issues, right? Personal work these kind of factors. It could be habits that have been ingrained since you were a child that you need to address. You know, so 20, 30, 40 year old things. And ultimately, you can't avoid those. If you want to make long lasting, sustainable changes, you got to go through them. You you have to address those. And um, a meal plan is not going to do that. No, no. It tells you what to eat. But then Mm -hmm. that's when things are like exciting and we'll say easy. But as things get harder and like that excitement wears off, it's not so easy anymore and you revert back to yep. what you did. Cause what you did before feels good generally. Like mm-hmm. that's why you did it. Like it's comfortable. It feels like home and you're just going to slide back to it, you know, yeah. but you got to kind of unpack it and it, you know, it's not always, I'll say fair. Some people have an easier time than others with, you know, improving yeah. their, their health and nutrition. And that's just like what it is. 
Yeah. You know, just like some people are better athletes than other, and some people go to the the NFL, and others of us yeah. never had a chance. Some like people are six foot eight. That's just some people are five foot eight. The hand you're dealt, <laughs> but you still can choose how you deal with it. So you may have to work harder than you know a friend of yours who all they did was this and they lost all this weight. Well, maybe they don't have a lot of emotional food issues, and they were just kind of eating a little too much, and that was it. But yeah. you have a lot to unpack from your, you know, your childhood of being told to finish your plate every night, and that really messed you up. Like that's just more work, yeah. and you can't avoid it by thinking that if I just cut out sugar, I'll be fine. Well, good luck for the rest of your life yeah. not having sugar as your food environment just bombards you with it. Yep, and then you start lumping in something like blueberries, right, which has sugar in it, but now it's getting lumped in with sweets, which. Are- people consider like cupcakes and pastries as sweets but they're also just processed calorie bombs right? what, do you, what do we call those you, fats yeah, why aren't they called fats they have more fat calorie than sugar calories yeah. why, why are they called sweets we call them fats and i think that's part of the reason why sugar gets such a bad name and i'm not saying i'm advising for people to yeah because it's of refined sugar part of those foods and it's the it's the dominant flavor yeah that our brain is very sim- like most desserts don't taste fatty like, they don't just taste like butter. Well, there are some yeah, cookies probably. I've had that just taste like butter. But, like, most of them are sweet, and that's, like, what, you know, tings our brain. And so we associate it with that. Yeah. But most of those calories come from fat. Like a donut that's fried mm-hmm. and contains, you know, butter or oil or whatever. Like, there's a lot of sugar, but there's way, there's probably twice as much fat as sugar. Yeah. In that. Which then fat, which we talked about before, fat and sugar together... Or hyper hyper palatable taste amazing, right? Yes, yeah, why we always want berries by themselves are going to be good, not amazing. They're easier, but they're way to, more satisfying to manage. And um, that's that's why you can house a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts because they taste so good and they're not super filling or anything, but they're really hyper palatable and calorie dense, and you just want to keep keep going. Yeah, and then another one is extreme high intensity exercise yeah right so people typically when you start a program you're highly motivated and you're like i'm gonna exercise harder and work more off and we all we know it doesn't work like that either right so really what happens is you just go too hard burn yourself out get injured try to do too much in a short amount of time and eventually end up doing nothing again yeah whereas the reality is something like slow, boring, basic resistance training, focusing on progressive overload for years is, has the greatest effect. That's what's going to do it for you. You know, it's going to, we like to compare it to, so just doing tons of high intensity cardio is more like just kind of making money and, and, uh, you make it and you spend it, you make it and you spend it. Mm -hmm. Whereas strength training is like investing so you, you make it, you get the benefit of that, but then you're investing in it, it's going to pay dividends down the road. So strength training helps you build and maintain muscle, which kind of is your dividends. Which, um, yeah, way better for longevity than the yeah. in the moment hit stuff. More, that, feeling more fatigued yeah. and things like that. And It's a tough mindset. It also helps improve your bone health and joints yeah. and ligaments. Again, stuff that's going to help you feel better down the road. So there is, yeah no quick fix easy button so yeah in that moment in that i'm motivated i'm gonna do a workout today well you could do a 40 minute resistance training workout and you're gonna feel like oh should i have done more i'm not tired i'm not gasping for air um this i I need more so and so instead you just go do super hard intervals right and yet in that moment oh now you're tired now you're gasping now you're lying on your back you feel like you did a lot so So you feel more accomplished yeah and it feels like this is this is what i need to do for a faster result when the reality is, and you're, you're chasing that quick fix. You can't force it. But you're probably not going to be doing that three or four times a week. No. Every month for the next 10 years. No. You're so. going to do it <laughs> like that for the next two months and then for some reason stop showing up to the gym or get hurt or just feel like crap all the time or your weight loss stops or whatever. And that's usually in our experience what's going to happen in a situation like that. Like it just doesn't last. So, yeah, so you see between waist trainers, between your exercise approach, between your diet approach, these more intense, quick fix things that people normally start off with or chase, you have to eliminate that thought process. Yeah. And like they're the extreme. Yeah. Because the reality is 
don't use a waist trainer. Yeah. Um, make strength training, resistance training the base of your exercise along with walking. Just yeah, go for and a walk. It's always going to benefit you. Address your nutrition from a long-term sustainable approach. Yeah. Which may mean addressing issues that you don't want to face. Yeah. Not just simply ignoring everything and just trying to force yourself to eat a specific meal plan. And for most people, like things that do help, we'll say with nutrition, like, yeah, like processed foods are easier to eat. So trying to make sure your Mm -hmm. diet isn't the majority processed foods is a helpful thing. And it's simple, you know, but that'll actually make a a meaningful impact rather than demonizing a whole food group like carbs or fats or whatever, just, you know try to eat less hyper palatable foods and like that'll actually help but you have to kind of stick with that and just make it something that you do because if you slip back into it after you like um, eliminating all processed foods and then one day you know you have a bad day and you just house like you know five twinkies well that will probably continue on yeah. you know that up and down that binge and you know don't eat for for a long time Um, so yeah, building those habits and just kind of making it a part of what you do rather than I'm doing this right now because that's not going to last. And here's the thing. Most people know the right stuff to do. Yeah. But when they start to do it, we all gravitate towards the quick fix. So like we pose a question in our Facebook group, what do you think, or when you think of eating better, what comes to your mind first? And the funny thing is When people decide they want to start doing something, the questions you always get are like, hey, what's the best supplement? Hey, what's the best meal plan? Hey, you know, so all these people want these quick fixes. But when we just simply pose the question of, hey, what comes to mind when you think of eating better? The answer is everyone knows. People know. They're pretty much spot on. So all pretty similar in our group. Stuff like less processed foods, no snacking, less processed foods and less alcohol. Less processed foods and less mindless snacking. Less processed food. Mindfulness and portion control. Stop eating when my hunger is satisfied. More natural foods. So you see, for the most part, so people, people know understand that they cut out junk, junkier processed foods for the majority of it and eat more whole foods, right? But then that's not the reality of what most people actually do. Try to do. Yeah. Uh, they look for again. Yeah. Let me let me now cut out. Let me cut out an entire group of whole foods. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no <laughs> right? fruit. No nothing. Yeah. I'm gonna cut out all carbs. Well, I thought most people know. Hey, well, I just need to eat less processed foods, right? You don't need to eliminate. Why would you eliminate whole foods? But that's what people end up doing because they think they're going to get wherever they're trying to get faster. But the more extreme, quick fix approach, again, never works out in the long run. Nah. Nah. So how do we avoid that? I think the most simple thing is you have to step back and have better expectations. That's a really big one we run into. People get upset. They're like, I've only lost like eight pounds this month. I'm like, holy shit. Like, you just lost two pounds a week. Like, that's as good as it gets for most people. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run, up early and home late. So having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop, mixed in water, once a day, and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. 
Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run, up early and home late. So having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because it w- I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop, mixed in water, once a day, and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. And I... Setting that expectation is important because most people are probably going to lose, I would say, a pound a week, maybe a half a pound a week, um, generally. Yeah. And a pound a week is what we would consider average. And here's the thing. The average millennial is gaining 40 pounds by the time they get to mid-age, so from 20 to 40. 40 40 pounds. pounds. And if you're sitting there, you're scratching your head, you're like, I don't want to gain 40 pounds. But then, hey, let's break that down for a second. From 20 to 40, 40 pounds. That's, that's 20 pounds. Or two pounds a year. Two pounds a year. <laughs> Jesus. Right? So. That's super slow. And then when you go to, okay, I need to make a change. I'm going to reverse this trend. Now all of a sudden, you people are losing two pounds a month and they're frustrated. Yeah. And it's like, well, most people are ending up where they end up by average weight gain of one to three pounds a year. So, and gaining is the easy part. Oh, yeah. It really is. <laughs> You're not even trying. Yeah. Gain, You're just right? living life and having no one, a good time. No one's trying to gain that weight, gain that body fat. And it's still a, a typical rate of one to three pounds a year. So why are we upset and frustrated with losing two pounds a month, half a pound a week? Yeah. It's because our expectations are, are off. They're messed up. And the reality is, I think we would all agree, losing it is harder than gaining it. Yeah. So if it's anything... More work. Why would it be faster? But they just, because people want it to be done quick. Yeah. Like, I just want to lose this and get it out of the way. Well, it took you 20 and, years. And to here's get there. the thing <laughs> the habits to gain it were in place. And if you go back to those, that's what's going to happen. So you need the habits to lose it and keep it off. Yeah, they have to become habits. Yeah. Right. So it is better for it to be slower and more more likely to be sustainable so that you can integrate these things into your life, right? So if you know, if general consensus is, well, I need to eat less processed food. Well, that's going to start with grocery shopping, right? And cooking more. But instead of, well, I'm going to do this entire, I'm going to eliminate all these, every single processed food. And you know what? I'm going to eliminate all carbs too, right? So now you're eliminating whole foods, that aren't even unprocessed, so you're making it extra hard. But starting with that is extreme. Why not just start with, I'm going to fix one meal at a time. I'm going to eliminate processed foods from my breakfast, right? And then revamp that one meal. Maybe it takes a month or two until, you know what, it's habit. You found two, uh, two or three meals for breakfast that you enjoy, and now you're not even thinking it's thoughtless, right? So then move on, do it for now, do it for a, a second meal, right? 
Yeah. This this is way easier to manage. Yeah, and now it's going to take longer. But even at that, you could be losing one to two pounds a month, which hey, that's what you were gaining in a year. Boom, that's fifty pounds in a year that you would lose, and you know, one pound a week. But even twenty five pounds, half a pound a week, it's still a lot. If at the end of in the one year, year you have twenty five pounds of body fat gone, you're going to be pretty happy, right? So you have to. If you have more realistic expectations, now all of a sudden you're not <clears throat> feeling pressured in yeah. taking that quick fix approach. Because if you feel like I have to lose this in eight weeks, and that's it, like I got to lose all this way, I got forty pounds to lose, and I got to do it in eight weeks. Well, you're just kind of setting yourself up to fail because it's not realistic for ninety nine percent of people. Now, if you're like, you know, four or five hundred pounds, like you could probably do that. But your average person that's just say forty pounds overweight, it's just not. A possibility and i think you know shows like the biggest loser or just social media and magazines and everything where there's so many you know transformations and quick you know quick fixes like yeah. you know this person lost this amount of weight in 21 days first off like that's not real and second off it gives people just this weird false hope that they can do that very quickly and like oh this is easy no problem well like there's actually work involved and it just takes longer than we want it to. Yeah. And there's just no changing it. There's no way around it. Yep. And it's hard to, to combat that thinking that we can do this very quickly. Yeah. Like that's one of the big ones we run into. And I try to set expectations with people early when they come to the gym with like, this is, this is a realistic way to do it. And sometimes it's not the most fun thing for people to hear, but like people need to know what to expect when they're trying to change. Yep. Otherwise, they're going to crash and burn every time. So avoid the easy button because the reality is the easy button really is a hard button. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's easy in that moment, but long term, it's hard. Yeah. And then just reshape your expectations. And then all of a sudden, you can exhale a little. Yeah. It doesn't feel so pressured. And, and you realize what you're after is, is, a, is more obtainable. And you don't panic so much. Yeah. Because the reality is like... People want to hit the easy button, but what ends up happening is we keep hitting the easy button and then failing and then hitting the easy button and then failing, whereas we could just slowly get a little better and actually have lasting change. Um, but the excitement of you know doing something extreme sometimes wins out. Like it's more attractive to like, I'm going to hit it hard and, and do this real quick. And that's why we end up just in a cycle of, hitting the easy button and then maybe going back to the weight we were or even gaining weight after, you know, mm -hmm. sliding even farther back and then trying to hit the easy button again. And it's a crappy cycle to be stuck in, you know? So if you're like, if you have been stuck in that cycle, you kind of have to take a step back and think, you know, well, maybe I should do something different. And we kind of outline what to do and, and take it very slow. Um, but you kind of got to buckle up for a little bit of a longer adventure yeah i think that's it that's it man it's all all we want to get off our chest yeah no waist trainers no waist trainers don't stop if it's a fashion statement cool whatever but it's not going to help you lose weight yeah it's and, and the, it's going to do like any quick fix approach a lot of times more harm than good yeah and specifically picking all weight trainers but it's it's like straight up physical stuff like yeah like you're you're not allowing your body to do what it wants to do. Yeah. And you're putting a lot of pressure on your internal organs. and You're messing up your breathing because your diaphragm's got a bunch of crap jamming into it. Yep. And that affects things way more. So, personally not a fan at all. Mm. Girdles. <laughs> Girdle. <laughs> That's one of those words, man. Girdles. Do they have man girdles? I just hate to hear it. Girdle. Ugh. It's too close to curdle. Mm. Or like a like a name from the 1940s. Or yeah. 30s. Myrtle. 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 Myrtle's girdle. Myrtle's girdle. <laughs> you feel like that was when like Ertle, Yertle. Yertle the turtle? Be, like peaked. Yeah. Like in the 1920s when the they had. Ertle. Everyone was named Myrtle. Everyone wore girdles. But then that fell off quick. Yeah. Do you know any myrtles? Nah. Nah. See? Do you know any 
what is it now? Like Ashley? Yeah. And Amber? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's Ashley. And As Amber. a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> Why don't we so in 80 years from now, people, isn't that, you ever think about that? Yeah. The way we think of Myrtle, like the future generations. That's how they're going to think about Gary. Well, Gary's, pff, Gary's like, out, man. Gary's a Myrtle. Yeah. I don't know any Gary's. You ever met a little kid named Gary? Nah. <laughs> it's actually kind of weird to think about a kid yeah. named Gary. I only know adults. I would triple. I, and there's not <laughs> many of them. Actually, I read, there was an article about how Gary was almost going extinct as a name. Do you blame yourself at all? Like in one of the years there was, no, you know, legit, I blame, look at who the famous Gary's have been. Gary Busey. Boom. Now name the other Gary that pops in your head. Quick, quick, quick. I don't know any other Gary Gary's. Gary Coleman. Oh yeah. Those are the Gary's. <sighs> Giving you a bad name, man. How's Gary Busey still alive? I feel like that dude's just been on like, let's see, like a 40 year Coke bender. Famous Gary's. So it's just, no one's naming their kid after. Like, that's, I don't know, man. I feel like like my name's still kind of classic. Look, look, look. Look at this article. I Googled it. Are you, are you called Gary? This is the first article that popped up on Google. No, the first two articles, right? One is 11 baby boy names about to go extinct. The other says, are you called Gary? Your name could soon be on its way to becoming <laughs> completely extinct. Gary is no longer the popular name it once was. We should try for a revival. Mm. Gary, which is believed to be a name of Germanic origin, meaning spear, was the 10th most chosen name in the U.S. for three consecutive years in 1951. Damn. Gary Fever had been spread to parents <laughs> of American-born baby girls as it was peak for females. What? In 1947. Dude, Hold have you ever met a Gary? Hold on. A girl? <laughs> Hold on. It was a female name? But then the trend came to a complete <clears throat> stop exactly 30 years later. So, 1977. When they realized that Gary's not a good female name. And then it, it was more of a boy name. Isn't that weird, though? Like, we think of it as a boy name because that's all we've ever known. I feel like if someone's going with the G name now, they go with Gavin. Gavin, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Names are real weird oh, now. Oh, William, though. Classic, baby. You're, stand, you're standing strong. That's classic. Oh, Gary. Oh, Girdle. Girdle? Girdle and Gary. Myrtle. Gary Waist Trainer. Or wait, so uh, a, a girdle. No, how did we get here? I don't know, man. What, what was the Waist Trainers called? What did we say? A girdle? A, yeah, we, but. That's what you said. I know, but what, where did I, what, what was, what's the Waist Trainer called that sounds like girdle? Or just Waist Trainer became girdle. Yeah, and then we and went then to Myrtle. And then girdle became Myrtle. Yeah. And then Myrtle became Old Names. Yep. Old Names became Gary and here we are and that's where we're at Gary was a female name how's that make you feel I, don't I mean, mean I'm like it's whatever it's more power to it maybe maybe it comes back maybe it's closer to coming back as a girl name maybe I should start the trend have a baby girl just to name her Gary and name her Gary Jr. <laughs> <laughs> just throw everyone off <laughs> Be like, this is 20, 20. She is a junior. Let's go. Just hype it up. And then I get on the news. And then Gary gets more popular. Or everyone's like, this dude's a psychopath. We should completely eliminate the name Gary. That's a possibility, man. Are you willing to take that risk? You know, <laughs> you know another name struggling? What's that? Craig. Craig. <laughs> Look, I only, look at this. Look at this one website. I only know one Craig. Save the Gary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what uh, if I find purpose in this and this just ends up being my, my Your cause? life mission? Yeah. Popular. You, you sell the gym. There's a... You, there, the internet is amazing. There is a YouTube video 
Well, there's a YouTube channel called Name Explain. And then yeah, there's a video on this Gary going extinct. Like you can make a YouTube for anything. anything. You just got to know what you're talking about. Well, you don't really. Dude. The name Gary is headed for extinction as only 28 babies out of seven. This was in 2013. 28 babies out of 700,000. Got the name. Damn. That's not a lot. That percentage is small. Mm. When was that? 2013? Yeah. It's probably even less. <laughs> it's probably even less now. Oh. What's the stat for 2020? I don't know, man. I don't want to know. Four. Need some Gary's out here. All right. If you're still, if if you're you're still, still here. Listening. If you're here, don't take that quick fix. Don't take that easy name. Nah. What's what's the name what, your kid Gary? <laughs> what's the most popular names in 2021? 20 we'll do 2020. That was a bad. 2020 top baby names. The easy way. When you could have gone Gary, people are out here going with male number 1. What is it? Oliver. All Ol- Okay. Number two. I like that name. Liam. Liam, yeah. Number is that just short for William? Look at you trying to... No, it says Liam. It would say William. I'm number two. That's okay. Because I bet William's somewhere on here. Number three is Theodore. Number four is Ethan. And number five is Aiden. Number six, oh, Benjamin. Oh, all right, Stay, Ben. Just still classic. That's a classic. Classic. Finn. Could you... Number, number nine is Finn. Finn? Could you imagine... Why would you name your kid Finn? I don't know. You could be cool as shit, Over though. Gary. Because Finn probably plays the guitar. Dude, tell me what you think about this. Grayson. Great. That doesn't surprise me. That's the top. Well, the number one G name is Gabriel. And then Grayson. Grayson's like the new age Gary. You got replaced. Gray. By a Grayson. Dude, Williams. I don't see no William on here. Don't worry about it, man. It's never going it's away. Not in the top fifty. Nah, it's okay. It stands the test of time. These, these, the easy way out. And then, all right, girls. What do we got? Gary's number. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia. Okay. Charlotte. Aurora. Aurora. That's cut, that's, a, a, that's. Could you imagine being a four-year-old trying to say your name? Aurora. I have a cousin named uh, that. Aurora. Aurora. Three syllables. I don't know. That's tough. That's tough. You know you're going to be set for life. And you know though. what? Take, take Aurora. That's yeah. not the easy way out. Thank you. For one, it's going to be hard to spell. It's just, a, it's just a hard name to say and spell. Aurora. A little adversity never hurt. Spell Aurora. A-U-R-O-R-A. Look at you. Spell and be champ. Violet. Oh. Now, okay. this is the one I would have guessed. Number five. Olivia. Yeah. I feel like everyone's named Olivia. Yeah. Ava. Whoa. What we got? This is this is hope that Gary can make a comeback. <laughs> Number ten in girl names. Is it like a name from the fifties? Dude, this is my grandma's name, so it's gotta be from my grandma is almost ninety. What is it? Hazel. Hazel? Hazel. That's a name. That's like hearing girdle again. Yeah. Hazel. Hearing girdle. Hey, can you <laughs> could you imagine calling like a one year old baby Hazel? No. Or no, it's for a or a four year old. A seventy five year old. A Hazel. Hey. You're just all of a sudden old. M- Mave. Mave? I feel yeah. like that's an old name too. A E V E. Scarlet. Okay. Sophia, Chloe, Abigail, Aldry, Grace. Yeah. None of those are too wild. Lily, Isabella. Ha- Hazel's the but one. Hazel. That's, that gives Gary hope. It, but it's going to take a while, though. You need like 40, 50 years, though, before you're back. It's mm. going to go away, and then before we die, it'll come back. Yep. Th- that's my prediction. In 50 years, we'll know. Mm. All right. Take those hard spelling. Don't take that easy button. Yeah, don't. Take those. Let's see what the hardest boy name. What, let's see what a hard boy name to spell and oh, say God. would be. 
Old, well, Theodore's number three. How is Theodore? I get Teddy. Teddy. Like that's an old name too, right? Yeah. Where are we coming? Where how Theodore come in so hot and Gary's extinct? Theodore just sounds a little more put together. Elijah. Elijah. Yeah. Mm. All right. That's that. That's it. Don't take the easy way out. Stop wearing <laughs> waist trainers. And bring back Gary. And bring back Gary. Yeah. He needs help. Catch you guys next week. See you. As always, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to learn more, check us out at CoastalFitnessVA.com or GaryDeagle.com. We'll see you next time.